everyone, and welcome once again. I'm Jerry Dodson. The matter at hand, a big game, Canada against Croatia. Let's get to that game now just underway. Let's join our commentators, Don Chevrier and Billy Packer. Gentlemen. Thank you, Jerry. About uh, nine minutes in, Croatia with a quick six-point lead to start the game on a run now has a 21-13 advantage over Canada. And the Croatians, Billy, as advertised, have been very tough at both ends of the court. Well, very difficult to match up with, but three fellows at the front line with NBA caliber experience. Excellent basketball team, but so far I think uh, Team Canada doing a fairly good job. Well, they've got to Tony Kukoc from the Chicago Bulls, Dino Raja, Boston Celtics experience, and Raja already is uh, running 12 points of the 21 that Croatia has scored. Canada, coached by this man, Ken Shields of Victoria, has never in World Olympic competition beaten either the former Yugoslavia or now this Croatian team. So they've got their work cut out for them, and it's almost a must-win situation to advance to the semifinals. Well, it really is. They can talk all they want to about the possibility that Greece could lose, but right now I think that the destiny has got to be in their own hands. Well, in the paint, Croatia has outscored Canada by 16 to 6 early on. Here we are courtside again at Maple Leaf Gardens. A very steamy and almost packed Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. An enthusiastic crowd. The thing that kind of interests me more than anything, Don, is the fact that Croatia has an incredible following here in this arena. I thought it would be a, a Canadian arena for the Canadian team, but to be quite honest with you, the Croatians came with their flags waving. They're very proud of the incredible tradition that their country has in basketball and the outstanding players that they have on the world scene. So they are here in mass tonight, and uh, I think every Croatian fan has a Croatian flag. And the divided loyalties, I'm sure, as was the case with the Greek fans the other night, in that uh, heart-pounding 74-71 win for Greece that put Canada's prospects in such dire jeopardy here. And uh, this game, as I say, if they don't win, it's a virtually impossible situation. They'll be in a multiple points. A playoff possibility with Greeks and with China. And, of course, the other game tonight over in Hamilton will have a lot of bearing on that. So we'll uh, bring you up to date a little later as that comes along. But right now, let's focus on Canada and Croatia. 21-13, 11-10 left. They play two 20-minute halves in uh, this World Basketball Tournament. With Vickery and Nash in the backcourt now for Canada, it makes them awful small. What Tony Kukoc uh, is able to do, and he has a brilliant ability to do this because he has the ball in his hands most of the time for Croatia, is he'll get a mismatch on some kind of a switch, putting victory down and low with somebody too big to handle. And that's something that uh, Canada has to really watch out for with a small lineup in the backcourt. Merrick got it back after making one out of two. So Canada on the attack once again. Inside the box. Yes. The box so far has been the offense, Don, and that's to be expected, obviously. He's used to playing to the likes of the guys that have experienced NBA play. He, he is, you can see a nice move by Canada now to go to the 2-3 zone. And that is because they were having trouble with the matchups on the switches. Now, they're still awful small out front, but it'll help them a little bit. Here's the outside jumper didn't go from Komet Zets. Five-point game right now coming off the halfway point of the first half. Steve Nash of Victoria, British Columbia. 6'6", 20-year-old. McKay sends it up, off the glass, and back into Croatian possession. Quick break here for Komazets, and he puts it down. Komazets, normally a starter, did not start tonight. That last pass by McKay really was a pass off the boards. Fox for three, hits it. Rick lighting it up tonight from the outside. Would love to have had that other opportunity against Greece the other night to go for the tying or winning basket. His college career down at North Carolina, I saw him make a huge one in the NCAA playoffs against Oklahoma. But that was not the case the other night against Greece as he went to the floor. Well, he's been a huge factor here tonight. 13 points already for Rick Fox. Good hit ahead by Croatia. And there we see Komazek, who did not start tonight. Powerful guy taking it on the inside. Great team size by Croatia right now. You can envision their matchup with the USA if that takes place. Fox set it inside for Spencer McKay. And this is Spencer's birthday from Oliver, British Columbia. He turns 26. Would love to celebrate with a big win over Croatia. Outside they go to Elanovic. We stay back in that 2-3 zone. Thomas Etz gets it up and off the rim. It's a four-point game at 23-19 for Croatia. 9-18 left to play here in the first half. 
And after a bit of a shaky uh, first minute or two, Ken Shields has to be a lot happier about how his teams responded in the last few minutes. Well, they had they had a hard time getting an offense going, and you saw that Rick Fox was, in effect, the offense for the first part of the ball game. They've settled down now, got it down within four, and the 2-3 zone has been working pretty effectively for them. And Comet zips from the line. We'll get another. 24-year-old. That makes him 13 for 15 so far in the uh, World Championships from the foul line. He's averaging 19 points a game. And he hits the another. leading score on that squad. And he gives Croatia a six-point lead. Steve Nash for Fox. Good drive. Nice block by Brankovic. Denied him. Quick break back down the court. Radjic. Head off the rim. Traveling call against Croatia. Excellent call by the official and a tough play to make for a ref, too, because a tremendous transition. He was right on top of the play and saw it, and as gifted as Kukac is with the ball, he did get caught for Walker. The officials, Wisla Zic from Poland and uh, Juan Figueroa from Puerto Rico for this match. Canada with Fox in control to McKay, trying to cut it to the six point lead. Sparek sinks it. Now it's a four-point advantage. Nice job by Smirk to sit down on that catch. You know, for a tall man, most of the times the guy won't bend over enough to get that pass. Real good job and a good finish. See, Nash just trying to get him to set up a little bit higher out. What's going to happen? Raja's going to hit the ball right to Raja in the center. There he is. Until right there, with a basket by Raja, Canada have been on a 10-4 run. See, what they've done, they've brought Raja up to the center against that 2-3 zone. With the two small guards out front, it'll be very easy to dump the ball right over their head, and then they've got an easy three-on-two situation on the inside. McKay to Nash. The jumper for three, and the rebound to Croatia. Pretty good push-off by Raja. He lets them clear out, give them some room to make the play, and he feeds it across court to Tony Kukoc. Side for the baseline jumper now. Larry Bird one-hander that time. So it's a six-point lead for Croatia, 7:44 until halftime at Maple Leaf Gardens. Harvey's World Championship of Basketball on BBS is brought to you in part by Sears Retail Stores and of Basketball on BBS is brought to you in part by Pontiac, where agility, control, and fast breaks are the keys to personal performance. And by Kellogg Canada, proud to be a national sponsor. With Sunil Joshi, Jerry Dobson, and Billy Packer, this is Don Chevrolet back at Maple Leaf Gardens. And Canada, after a stumbling start, has come on to play pretty well here in the paint. Croatia, though, has been dominant. They've doubled what Canada has done there. And they got some transition baskets, which really helped them build up that early lead. Canada's doing a much better job getting back now, primarily because they got the two guards. Now they're small again, going man to man. Doubling down inside any time Roger gets the ball. Courageous swings it. Good coach. Missed it. Second chance. Comazetz makes no mistake. And you can see why that young man is a good scorer for this club. He's got a nose for the ball. Now Rick Fox, Canada's dominant scorer tonight. Almost a one-man scoring machine for the Canadians. As it just outside the three-point zone. Now goes into the paint. Sends it over to Nash. As Croatia forces Canada high again. Everybody's standing for Canada right now. Vickery finally gets open. And makes it. Joey Vickery from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Five years on the national team. And it's a five-point game. The team was really standing around for a long time. Coach Shields hollering at him, and they finally got some movement. They go back to the 2-3 zone. Zlea T. Cannon. Big 6-7, 200-pounder. Cross-court delivery for Comas. That's now back handed. the other way, and he doesn't get it. Kind of surprised to see Croatia not hitting from the outside. It's one of the things they do very well. Vickery misses this one, and Croatia battles and wins the rebound. Kukoc delivers it down beside the net. Fed again, had it taken away for a moment. Good defense by Vickery, and Canada wins a turnover. Here's Joey Vickery. Split up. 
But Kay needed to put that right up immediately. Instead, it's Croatia coming back, putting it in. Dino Raja scoring. Don, that's got to be the third or fourth basket that Raja has scored on the break tonight. Just out hustling the big men from Camden and getting down there. Smirk can't stay with him, neither can McKay. So Great hustle. Being a three point game, it's a seven point game for Croatia. see that there was McKay when he had an opportunity to put it up and draw the foul immediately doesn't do it Raja picked it up and you see Raja right there on the break as well good defensive play on one end and then hustled on the other two three zone again I still believe Raja at the foul line can be the answer against his zone Croatia's size really really dominant right now and evident here as uh, that basket is sucked by Stoyan from Kronovic. Well, uh, Frankovich is just too big on the inside with nobody blocking out that 2-3 zones causing some problems. I don't think Canada can stay with that much longer. They trail by nine. Just over five minutes till halftime. They wanted victory in the game to get some more outside shooting, but it makes them so small on the defensive end. Vickery does not hit. And the ball goes over to Croatia. Vickery was 0 for 6 against Greece, 0 for 4 from the three-point line. Then got back to the hotel and found out he'd been robbed, so that's what you call a bad night. They've got to get some outside shooting for him because he certainly is a, a detriment on the defensive end being that small. And he averaged about 40% on three-point shots last season. He could hit from the perimeter. TVT Cannon now inside, and the basket goes from Kamazet. I think that Kamazic not starting tonight. As soon as he got into the ball game, he's just taken over offensively. At about 6-5, almost 6-6, presents real problems for the guards. Here's Steve Nash, played college ball at Santa Clara, named the MVP, first Canadian ever recruited by that school. Of course, they beat Arizona in that monumental first-round upset of the NCAA. He was a big part of that, a big part of this. Fox can't hit it. And Dino Raja quickly takes possession and slows the pace down for Croatia. When you see a guy like Fox mix, miss a shot that badly, what happened there was Kukoc pushed him down underneath, right around the waistline, sent him right off center on the jump shot, no call on the play. Well, Frankovic wanted that on the lob. Kukoc to Kovacek, and he hits again. Kovacek just on fire now. 14 points to measure Croatia's lead. Three and a half to play until halftime. Don, I mentioned Candace staying in that zone with a small team too long here in this case. The Croatian team is matched up to it. They're adjusted to it, and now they're just taking advantage. Box failed to hit again. Trouble for Komazets. Not for long. Got some help, and in it goes. Now they jump into a 40-24 lead, 3-0-6. Croatia dominating here late in the first half of play. Arian Komazets adding two more right there. My horse has wings. He's not going to run this race. He's going to fly. Number seven. The Canadian team delighted uh, many in this country when they won their first two games. And this is the home team and getting a lot of wonderful support here at Cops Coliseum and tonight at Maple Leaf Gardens from the fans. But the fact is that Croatia now with a 16-point lead has been on a 15-3 run. And their field goals, Croatia's hit on 57%, Canada just 35, and they've outgunned them 3 to 1, 30 to 10 with points in the paint. So that size, again, the dominant factor in this basketball game tonight. Here's the jumper, and that goes from Martin Keane. Well, a complete change of lineup at that timeout, and actually, Canada got smaller with McMahon coming into the ball game, and he's really going to have problems defensively. And there he is, Ron McMahon from McGrath, Alberta. Reliable uh, shooter from the line, but uh, the height disparity wasn't bad enough. As you say, it gets worse now. He's listed at 5'9". I, I tend to think that's generous. Arian Konazets with a strong first half. We get down to the final two and a half minutes of it. 40-26 to score. And with Croatia winning the rebound there. Big Zia Tikkanen. 
Isaiah Tekin and a kind of a skinny fellow that does not look to handle the ball much. Wants to be on the receiving end, but you saw how well he moved without the ball underneath the basket. He's going to come out now, be replaced by Alanovich, who came into the ball game as a starter tonight. Excellent defensive player. And a 6'4", he's one of the shorter ones out there. Croatia has out-rebounded Canada 23-14 to this point. Again, height has a lot to do with that. Right, he is the smallest by two inches. Two coach, he's denied. And we get to a chance for him to shoot from the line now with 2.17 to go till halftime. Rick Fox getting a rest after a very start. So used to seeing Kukoc go and use that left hand. Tony drop steps, comes back down into the inside to the right, which he doesn't do often. Hallis nowhere to be found. There's one. In 40 minutes against Australia, Kukoc had uh, an unusual game. He was 0 for 6 on the floor. Ended up with just four points and had eight assists. He is seven on the night in this one. Ron McMahon brings it back up court for Canada. Down, down 42 to 26. Keen flash into the ball pretty well. Three-point attempt. Hallis missed that. <laughs> and Brunkovic took his time on that. Well, that's an inadvertent whistle there. That uh, has nothing to do with... Brankovic had the ball. Jackson was trying to hold him, but it's just an inadvertent whistle here. We got the world's longest and most annoying buzzer going here that doesn't want to quit. There it is. Now it's uh, messed up the clock. The clocks are all on the scoreboard. Everything has gone haywire. Jackson wanted a jump ball. You can see he does have possession of the ball. Brankovic just kind of looks at him and toys with him a little bit. Now, one clock is working. It showed two minutes, and now they go back to 15 to 40. Got a long way to count down here to get things straight. We had about two minutes to go, and now it's 15:39 uh, showing on these clocks. An electronic mess on our hands of Maple Leaf Gardens. Something short-circuited there when that buzzer went on for seconds on end. Well, you know, Croatia in this tournament, I realize that people are talking about Dream Team, too, but Croatia has been almost as dominant. They beat Cuba by 20 points, dominated South Korea by uh, 51 points, then beat Australia by 14, then China by almost 20. So they have, uh, they have just controlled their ball games. Not as deep in talent as the U.S. club, but certainly with Kukoc handling the ball, Brankovic and Raja down on the inside. They're big enough to play with them for a time. Second half of our doubleheader to follow. The U.S. and Puerto Rico stay with us for that. And at 54, as the clock is now running in correct here in the first half. And again, Croatia will send Dino Raja, it looks like, to the foul line. I think it's really important, Don, for Ken in this last minute and 54, hang on to the ball a little bit. Try to occupy some clock. Don't let this spread get any deeper on them. They've got a lineup on the floor, three of which uh, players did not see any action until the last minute. So they've really got to be patient here. Roger missed his 18th point of the night. And the diminutive McMahon brings it back for Canada. 43-26 the score, a minute 45 to go in the half. Go to a 1-3 offensive set. Nice move to take their time here. Man covered by Adonovich. Gives it off. Now Hallis, top of the key. Trying to post up Jackson on the inside. Now, I talked about being patient, but not to use the whole 30 seconds. They tried to post up Jackson. He came to the ball, but a real good job defensively helping out on the inside. Such a generous allotment of the shot clock, you rarely see that call, but uh, they used it all. Now, Komasec, uh, even though he plays a guard, he's got about an inch and a half on Jackson, so he was certainly capable of playing him in a low post. No double team on Raja, and that's a mistake. 45-26 now with a minute to go. The plan for Canada was to double down low on Raja any time he got the ball. He stepped out a little deeper there. No basket. McMahon, though, will go to the line. Canada made it a four-point game at one point. That's as close as they've been. 
You see, Hallis, Raja goes right over and gets no help whatsoever, and Raja was able to go to the basket before any help could come. And we have a timeout call by Croatia with 53 seconds to go in the first half, and they lead it 45 to 26 over Team Canada. Don, when you think of Croatia, and of course, uh, what was Yugoslavia, if you put together the Yugoslavian, what was the entire country, and when you think about the fact that Petrovic well, played for them last year until his unfortunate uh, death, that country probably had as good a heritage in basketball for its size as any place in the world, and you really would think that they'd be competitive even now if they could be together as a unit. Russia broke out first in uh, basketball of the European continent and quickly followed, as you say, by the players from Yugoslavia. They became very skilled very quickly, and their presence continues to be felt here in the National Basketball Association. Right, along with the Soviet Union, uh, what was the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, they have both won three gold medals in the world championships more than any other country. The United States would do, and there's a guy, uh, Don Nelson, looking on that would like to see the United States have an opportunity to get their third. And Kukoc brought his agent tonight, too. <laughs> well, he doesn't need him anymore. What, he signed for $26 million over six years. I think that agent has done his job. Underpaid. Uh, my foot, maybe this guy doesn't read the newspaper. Or he does it in jest. So the uh, inbounds pass in the hands of Fox with 53 seconds to go in the first half. He sends it out to Greg Wiltshire and to McMahon. Well, Keen came into the game and flashed to the post. Well, he hasn't touched it since. Let's see if he can get some kind of a shot off. Nice screen by Wilson. Fox hits it. Now, or two. Fox gets the basket. Wilcher should get an assist there with an excellent screen out front. A little pick up high here. Nice. Broken up by Hallis. Couldn't regain control of it, however. Kucho has it. I think he was surprised that the ball came to him that easily. He should have picked that off. Adanovic. Fox watching him. Now chasing Komazets. Canada fights for possession. And jump. the jump ball. Great job by Raja. Boy, he has had a first half. In both on a rebounding. He got off on the break so many times. Those two 14s, would, neither one would yield. Dino Raja and Greg Wilcher. Raja... Dina Raja, a member of the Yugoslavian team at that time, the silver medal winner in 88. And then, of course, winning the silver medal in uh, 92, losing in the finals to Dream Team 1. <laughs> Look at McMahon peering out from behind. Bronkovic, number 11. Wow. Forced him by over a foot. And uh, we get the call there with just four seconds to go. The foul number eight. Alanovic got the call. The Ken, Ken Shields was asking for a two-shot foul there, automatic. And they call a quick timeout on the waiting seconds of the first half. Hopefully, to organize something, maybe get three points here before halftime. Right, it ought to be Rick Fox getting the shot off here. Well, runs certainly have been a big part of this game tonight, and uh, Croatia... Sadly for Canada, has had the lion's share of those. You tend to see more of these, and they sneak up on you, don't they, Billy, in international basketball? Well, they really do. You know, when you start thinking of last-second shot, now Fox has got to be your primary guy. He's the, of the fellows in the game. But I, I think this would be a good time to substitute for a victory who did make his one of his outside shots tonight. Let Fox go ahead and get the solid screen, try to drive off. But if he's looking to dump outside the victory with four seconds to go, you've got enough time to do that. But there are no substitutions coming, so Vickery will not be taking a shot, I can assure you. Well, there's a Big Dino. 6'11", 227, drafted by the Celtics in the second round of the NBA draft in 89. From the line, Croatia's been 8 for 11, Canada 2 for 4 in this first half. You now, we talked about uh, Raj's great uh, international play against Dream Team one in uh, Barcelona he actually played against them twice and did well both times at 14 points eight rebounds in the first game and in the gold medal game 20 he had 23 points and two rebounds well I didn't know from that diagram that Ken uh, drew is that Rick Fox is going to be in the paint now Hallis who has shot fairly well in this tournament from the outside could be another alternative 
Here comes Fox out looking for the screen. Takes it way out at midcourt. Two seconds left. Got to hurry it. Nice. He got fouled. Frankovic got off his feet to try to stop it. Very smart play by Fox. He actually wasn't even worried about the shot there as much as he was to make sure he got fouled. In second, 16 foul. Rick Fox at the line, shooting three. Not a smart play by Frankovic, who really went out. He's big enough merely to keep his hands up and not dive towards the ball. That's another difference in this uh, international game. If you're fouled from three-point range, you get three foul shots, and that's what Rick Fox has here. Missing the first. There you see. Now watch it. He gets the solid screen. Now see, Vrankovic goes up in the air. At six foot 11, seven feet, all he had to do was just keep his hands up. He hits the second. He's got one more to go. Raja goes and talks to his teammate of the Celtics. Give him a little conversation there on that third foul. And he's good at two out of three. It's a 15-point Croatia lead. And that'll do it for the first half of this must-win situation for Canada that has not gone well. The biggest lead was 19. The smallest lead was four. And at halftime, the margin is 15 points for Team Croatia. And the size and the power of the big man working inside has been the difference. Well, it really has. Uh, Ken Shields tried to make some adjustments by going small to get some outside shooting. But when he did that and went to the 2-3 zone, he was just too small for too long. So a successful start to the preliminary round has been followed by a tough loss to Greece and uh, now this 15-point halftime deficit to Croatia. Let's go to Sunil Jashi. Thank you, Don. Uh, Jerry, first of all, your thoughts? Going to have to get some quick points against this team especially that could be fatal but here's a guy with a great first half Dino Raja 19 he's pumped in out of the 45 scored by Croatia and the man of the center there Rick Fox number four for Canada has scored 17 that's more than half Canada's 30 point total Fox doing a good job coming off screens Raja who's averaging 22.8 points per game so far in the previous games in the world championships the leading scorer for Yugoslavia uh, for Croatia and uh, Obviously, when I think of a great player like Raja and you think of the World Championships, I go back to Yugoslavia again using that term and think of Kresimir Kosic. When you, in the history of the World Championships, he played in four of them. He has to be probably the greatest individual performer because he was involved with their gold medals. Certainly one of the great traditional guys that started the big men that could move out in the perimeter from that country. And the big man two coach for three off the rim just missed it. Martin Keane for Canada as they get the fast break. Nash pumps it down to the corner. And that doesn't go. But they win the rebound. Second chance for Corey Hallis. Canada draws the foul down there, 20 seconds into the half. You know, Corey has really been an explosive scorer for Canada. Of course, his big game was against Argentina, where he had 31, made 8 for 14 uh, from the field. He has not been able to get on track here tonight, and if Canada is going to make a run, they've got to get that primary score, Rick Fox, uh, going as he is. But they've got to get somebody else to come up, and maybe Hallis is the guy. He's been doing it off the bench. Tonight he was a starter. He gets one of two from the line. A 14-point lead for Croatia in the early seconds of the second half. Two 20-minute halves in world basketball. You can see with this team, they go back to their man-to-man, -man, get out of that 2-3 zone. With a smaller club, they almost felt they had to play zone. Radkovic to Raja. Better help out inside because Kukac will make that quick move. Sends it outside. They whip it around. Here's the jumper for three, and it goes. Number eight, Vyadan Aladovic. You can't fault Nash, though. He realized that Kukac was right down inside on Fox. A little better movement now by Canada. They were standing still when they fell behind there in that first half. Inside, Hallis feeding Keane. He couldn't make it go. Aggressive move by Keane, but he's got Frankovich just too big. Tough for a 6'4 man to take it in on a 7 1. <laughs> Bit of a mismatch. That's the way it is as you look right around this Croatian team. Quick pass inside missed here. Komazet. Well, Komazet's made the good cut. And if you make a cut on this team and keep your eyes open, 
Good coach will get you the ball. That particular time, after making the cut, he took his eyes off the pass. And this is young Steve Nash, just 20 years of age, to Wiltshire, getting it back from him. Has it poked away, and uh, out of bounds it goes. Canada wins it back. Now, since Wiltshire is not looking to score, Brankovic is merely taking his time to guard everybody else. He's kind of like in a one-man zone under the basket. It's going to make it difficult for Canada to score. So Wiltshire is going to have to become more active. See how Brankovic is right under the basket? Keen tried to jam the rebound. They get a third crack at it. And a fourth. Wiltshire is fouled on that. A moment ago, you saw the Puerto Rican team watching this game tonight. As they get ready to play in the United States in game two of our big basketball doubleheader for the World Championships on BBS a little later on tonight. There's Hallis with a number of pump fakes. And he has really scored extremely well uh, uh, up until tonight. You know, 14 against Angola, 31 as I mentioned against Argentina, 7 against Russia, and a big game with 20 against Greece. But he's got to prove to be able to do something here quickly in the second half. Here he goes again. And that drops for the two-minute mark of the second half. 48-33 now. Well, he had a tryout in 93 with Minnesota. Komad Zets to Raja. Back outside they go again to Adanovic. Drops it off for Tony Kukoc. He has trouble inside. Good defense there by Wiltshire of Canada. Now the jumper goes. And no basket. We had a whistle there, and it'll go to Canada. U.S.-Puerto Rico next at 9 o'clock. And uh, you'll want to watch that game. The U.S., the most entertaining team by far in this tournament. So Canada on the traveling turnover wins it with Nash. Kind of interesting. Canada has played a pretty good start of the second half, but they're still looking at a 15-point deficit. Canada got to do it. Yeah. Fox tries. Second time around. That goes. Nice jam there. And happy about it is Martin Keane. Well, Keane came off the bench with energy in the first half. Maybe what's necessary to help this team get moving. Somehow, despite the size disadvantage, Canada's got to get a run. And the crowd is alive now and urging them on. Goal and 10. they win a big rebound there. That's a goal, Ken. It's called anyway, and so Keane will cop it up. Hey, Keane is really fired up. <laughs> he's, he's off the court with his feet almost all the time. Here comes Nash now. Keane played a little bit for Billy Tubbs down at Oklahoma. That's the kind of stuff Tubbs would like to see. A jumper short. Anonovic back up the court quickly for Croatia. His jumper off the rim stays out. Rebound won by Wiltshire. Keen. Fox. Out about the three-point jumper. Gives it to Hallis. He'll try it and hit it. And Keen has been the guy along with Hallis. As I said, they're going to have somebody else to provide some offense instead of just Fox all the time, and they're getting it. They shaved three off the halftime lead. It's 50-38. Roger. Comes back with a quick jumper for Croatia. And that was for two. There was a case where Roger's on Keane. Keane should have gone long because Roger never would have got with it. Oh, a pretty three-pointer by Corey Hallis from Almont, Ontario. It's 52-41. Crowd alive. Canada giving it all they have to cut into this Croatian lead early in the second half. Alanovic with it. He's been on the court along with Kukoc almost the entire time. Kukoc from the paint. Alanovic back outside again. They try to play catch. Now he'll drive and Canada on the call. Denies him. That was Keane again almost getting another goal 10. He's got to be careful. Although he's full of energy right now, he also has to use his head. They'll give uh, Tony Kukoc two from the line here. But Canada getting off to a fine second-half start. It's 52-41 on the World Championships on BBS from the Garden. This is my first bet I've ever done. I'm going to bet on Watch Blue Jays baseball. On the Here's the block I was talking about coming all the way across the lane. Fox being posted up down inside by Kukoc does a pretty nice job. When Kukoc gets that low, though, you've got to get some help. He's so great with the drop step. Canada's had a nice 11-7 run here to begin the half. Kukoc hits on that first attempt. Kukoc coming into this uh, game so far in the 
World Championships with just four for eight from the line, which means he's not taking it to the basket very often. And he makes two right there. Big man for Canada in the second half is Corey Hallis with nine points. That's nine of Canada's 11 in the second half, which is about four and a half minutes old. Thomas is just knocking him all over the floor. That is about the fourth foul that Comis had on that particular occasion. Finally got it called. I guess they were, he was told to go after Hallis, try to wear him down a little bit because he had the hot hand. He parked him on the seat of his pants. Yeah, kind of a foolish foul. You see him pushing and pushing it, and finally he gets called for the foul as he knocks him to the floor. Now Fox drives to the layup that doesn't go. Kukoc wins the rebound, and back comes Croatia. Beautiful pass. And they hit inside. Nice three-way combination passing play capped by Komazet's basket. Well, it's nice to have a six-foot-ten guy that can lead the break as Kukoc can. Nice dump on the inside. Komazetch on the follow through, an excellent fast break. And on the foul over the top by Steve Nash, it becomes a three point play in the attempt. And the Croatia finally with a little breathing room back to where they were and better by a point than where they were at halftime with a lead of 16 right here. Well, here, if you're Team Kenda, you've got to be patient. Bad pass. Can't afford that. Raja, the big man, drives and he's denied. Great recovery by Keane to block it at the last moment. Sensational play. Hakeem giving up a lot of height down inside. Raja is looking to take him. Trying a little pick and roll here. Height, yes. Hart, no. He's tough inside again. Turnover for Canada. Nash brings it up with Keane. No. Keane tried to chip it on the rebound. It didn't go. I tell you, he's putting on a great show of effort, though. Kind of thing that any team would love to have. Five and a half minutes into the second 20-minute half. 57-41 to score Croatia. I'm surprised, though, that Croatia doesn't take him down low with Raja. Try to just put a body on him. Kukoc outside again. Here's the pass. Baseline jumper doesn't go. That from Komazets. Palace quick break. He's got the shot. Off the rim. Rebound taken by Rankovic. Corey had an opportunity to get an easier shot there. He just wasn't patient. A lot of whistles being uh, blown right now, Don. It's very difficult for the fans. They are not the official ones. Here's the jam by Stoyan Brunkovic. It's an 18-point game. Kukoc with the ball is so tough. Fox jumps for three. No. I, I think timeout for Canada, and I'll tell you why. They've made a terrific run, and they have, and it's been met by Croatia. They're down 18 now. They cannot afford to let the tempo of this game go completely now. What a two-way show by Martin Keane. He's there to make the sensational play at one end. He comes back to the other end and almost puts it in here. That's a nice drive by Nash, and... Keen just couldn't get it to fall. And he gets another one. Justice is served. 59-43. Anonovic to Kukoc. Roger got hit in the eye. He's having a little conversation on one side of the court with Frankovic. Fox guarding Kukoc. The three-point attempt short by Komazetz. Keen. With a dunk. They get it that way as Curry Hallis puts it in. Hey, Akeen is putting on some kind of show here, Don. Both ends of the floor. Great hustle on his part. He was born in Hallis. Kingston, Jamaica, and he's been in Canada since 76. He's quite a ball player. It's allowed Alice to open up here in the second half, gain some confidence. Did not have the first half that was necessary for his club, but coming back strong now. And Hallis hits from the line, so it's 59-46, 13 points to lead. But here we are at eight minutes has gone by, and Croatia right back about where they were to go into the second half. And that's what makes it so frustrating, doesn't it? Arian Komazets. 
Inside, quick release, short from Brankovic. Now a little McMahon. Alice a little tired right now. His jumper yep. does tired, not go. Tired players don't make jump shots like that. And he, he was tired getting back down the court. He has to realize that as a young player. If you're tired, give the ball up. Fox again shadowing big Tony Kukoc. Lays it up and gets the whistle. And it's against Rick Fox for pushing. That is his third foul. Five and you're gone under these rules. Now Kukoc, as we know, played in the Barcelona Olympics. He was the MVP of the World Championships back in 1990. I'll never forget that first game against Dream Team 1 in the, in the Olympics in Barcelona. Scotty Pippen, and you remember all that controversy between yep. Kukoc, and, Kukoc and Pippen and, and Jordan. Pippen said, I'll start, and I want to play him head up. He did. Kukoc had four points. Now, Tony and company appear headed for another silver medal here. That's about the most they could expect in this tournament behind the Dream Team. No basket. It's a beautiful drive, though, by Tony. He was fouled way on the outside. So on the team foul timeout, we have a stoppage in play here with a 59-46 lead for Croatia. 11.55 to go in the second half of play by Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. I know a thing or two about tools. 15 points that Canada's down, but the folks here from Kiel Q obviously feel that Canada's still going to win. What do you guys think here as far as this team is concerned? What's that? To Chevy and Packer. <laughs> Don't get uh, trampled up there in that mob, Sunil. 59 46 with 11.55 to go in the second half of play. Canada with an uphill battle is uh, cut it by two, the lead in the second half. Canada goes real small again in the backcourt. Victory and Mac McMahon and out, out in the front. Paid off for one possession. Yep. Hey, what's really amazing, Canada in this half has out-rebounded Croatia 14 to 6. Size differential and all. Well, give Keane some credit there. There's victory. You'll see Kukoc get the ball in his possession from here on out. He didn't want those guards to be bothering him. Fox lost it driving. Roger back the other way. Ananovic. McMahon all over him. Croatian wins it, Kukac with it, pumps it inside, and up they go for the layup that goes from Kovacic. So in field goals, that's the success rate. Impressive for Croatia, not so for Canada. They're not hitting with the chances they have had at the other end. Keane hooks it, doesn't go. And Canada will uh, win the uh, inbounds pass here. Good pass on the inside. Komazec again at six foot five. So strong in there. No matter how they match up with the guards, he seems to have the upper hand inside. This is Ron McMahon, 28-year-old guard from McGrath, Alberta. He and Vickery are simply dwarfed out there. Smerik inside looks for room. Can't get it. Ron Kovic denied him. Coach under control at all times. Fox defending wins it, gives it to McMahon. Turnover for Canada. Keen. No. Off balance on the play. Maybe getting a little tired. He's expended a tremendous amount of energy to help bring his team back. And there's that height differential. Komazet. Komazet is just moving down in the low post. Using Vickery or McMahon either way, they just can't handle him down inside. Ten minutes left in the game. The hook. That goes from Mike Smerick. Smerick, a member of the L.A. Lakers back-to-back -back world champions. Oh, oh. 
Trying to double up outside on Kukoc. Take the ball out of his hands a little bit. Not bad strategy. Alanovich has been out there just about all the way tonight along with this man, Kukoc. And big Dino Roger, number 14. Now, Alanovich really doesn't make a play, so when the ball's not in Kukoc's hands, they have some problems generating their offense. At least in a half-court set. Now, Comas, that's finally get a rest. Uh, Josef Grankovic will come in. And more size at 6'6 for Canada to deal with. Joey Vickery is 5'11. Dwarf by him as the basket goes for Croatia, and the lead jumps up to 65 48. Beautiful set play, great pass and catch. Vickery's three point jumper. No. Having to shoot over too tall a man. Came up wide of the basket. We have nine minutes and change left in the second half. Roger now with 23 points on the night for Croatia. Right. I'll tell you, Fox and Kosic and, and uh, Kukoc have been playing it out here the entire night, head to head. You've got to figure they're getting a little tired. A lot of tough minutes. Rick did get to sit down a little bit in the first half. Croatia works it around the perimeter. The freshest man, Vankovic, hits it. You can see what they're doing. The instructions from the Croatian bench is to take your bigger guards and shoot over the small guards from Canada. They'll have to make an adjustment there. They're too small at the guard position. Ball is tipped out of bounds, and Croatia gets possession. for the solid screen. Outside for three, no. Off the rim and then out of bounds. Don, how many times tonight has Tony made the fine move to the inside and with that ability he has to stand here. Here's that lob pass. Great job by Roger, but he goes inside and then he hits a man outside and has not been able to deliver the three-point shot even though they're wide open. I know the chips for two. And we'll get a chance to make it a three-point play with now Croatia dominating 69-48. A little over eight minutes to go. And Canada's medal hopes fade with every passing minute. And Don, the other thing that you have to start thinking about now as well as not being able to make the comeback to win this game is point differentials. You know, there's some crazy systems that happen here in regard to advancing to the next round, obviously dependent on how badly you either get beat or beat someone. I don't know, it does make it a three-point play. Later on, Greece will play China. They would have to lose for Canada to have a chance. Canada would have to then beat China in their final game by at least four points. It gets very muddled, but we'll bring you up to date with the other game as it happens later on tonight. No question that the Croatian team is easily going to defeat Canada here with a 22-point lead and eight minutes to go. Palace, yes. Corey's had an excellent second half. 70 to 50 now the score. Long pass and the jam for Stoyan Bronkovic. There aren't many players in the world that can make that pass from that deep. Kukoc is able to see the whole floor at six foot ten, has great delivery. And we have a timeout and a chains of possession down there with 7.33 to go in the second half. 72.50 is the score. Three. We'd like to clear up some... Ontario, but they're actually fans of the Croatian team. What are you cheering for here? We're cheering for Croatia, London. Why is that? What about Canada? Canada's okay too, number two, number one. Now, do you think you're gonna win the gold here against the Dream Team? They're gonna kill you, I see they're gone. Croatia got the gold. Who's your favorite team here? No way, USA! No way, USA! Guys, I'll take it back to you, please. Billy and Chevin. If their team makes the final, they'll have no voice, I'm sure, left to cheer them on. 72.50 here, traveling call on the turnover to Canada here. 
And uh, Croatia now with one of these little runs that sneak up on you. 13 4 the last four and a half minutes has opened up a 22 point advantage. Rick Fox, the jumper. No, he's been quiet in the second half. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's expending so much energy on the defensive end of the floor guarding Tony Kukoc that he has lost his offensive thrust. Maybe to set some solid screens to get Fox open again could be the key for Canada. He scored 17 on the first half. Nothing in the second half. Well, what happens, and you don't even realize this, as you get tired, you don't get to the spots to get your shot off. And he really hasn't put himself in a position to score in the second half. Consequently, I think it's the coach's job to set some screens to get him an open shot. player of his magnitude doesn't even realize in a game like this that he is wearing down. William Niyuku with the inbounds pass to Fox. He'll try this. Nothing seems to go the for him. He got a whistle there anyway. Brankovic takes his third foul for Croatia. Josip Brankovic. Canada. Possession. Nash. Cute little pass down inside. Slap back out. William Niuku, he can't make the play. Now Fox, top of the key, takes see, see, there's no screen, so he's got to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. He hits it. And that time he does. That's the first two of the second half for Rick Fox. Back to a 20-point lead, 72-52. Six and a half to go. And that's in roll three. Kukoc wanting a foul on the outside. He really probably hung on to that ball a little bit too long. He recognized the double team and should have got rid of it. William Niuku denied. From Halifax, Nova Scotia. Moved here from Ghana in 1976. Vankovic. Watched by Nash, feeds two cups. Using a little clock here. Smart move by the Croatian club. Inside six minutes now. Rebound doesn't go, and it's passed to Nash. Right side, nice feed inside, and it's missed by Niyuku. Nice. Oh, finished off by Tony Kukas. We took it in with an excellent give there he could have tried to make a more difficult shot saw his teammate open there's Fox again a blistering pace late in this half as Brankovic hits for Croatia and they lead 76 to 52 trying to bring it all back at once now Brankovic score I'm out Canada it's their team just needs a blow, and they're going to get it. Ken Shields' team now trailing 78 to 52. Five minutes, 11 seconds left. It's been Croatia almost all the way in the gardens tonight. Individual stories, Billy, in this game tonight are interesting. Well, uh, Fox and Alice obviously have been Canada's offense, and kind of uh, in an interesting way. Fox had. 17 points in the first half, just as two here in the second. Hallis did not score in the first half. Come back with 14 big ones in the second half. Raja, quiet in the second half. He really hasn't had to score that much because Kukoc has been getting the ball to all the other teammates. You saw the numbers in the paint indicating the, how the height and skill dominates inside for Croatia. We have just over five minutes to go in the game. They lead it 78 to 52. This is Steve Nash. William Niuku. See how Frankovic is not guarding anybody. He's playing a one-man zone down inside. That's why it's so difficult to get anything off down low. There is an example where he picked up his own man. Bad miss by Nioko. He's guarding nobody but playing a one-man zone. Joko is takes a shot, puts him in position to rebound. Nothing for Canada at that end of the court. That's Here's the pass. steal. Nash. Alice. The time to set. And makes it go for three. Now that was set up as many good things as Tony Kukoc has done well tonight. 
uh, that last pass just uh, if you didn't have this kind of a lead would have been a disaster. Got to get back to playing solid. Bumping with Nash, working it down toward the Canadian end. Magic denied the first time. Missed with the second attempt. Now Croatia scores from outside. It was Rodkovic. That was a tough break right there for Kandu. It played some solid defense for 30 seconds. Katie Jackson's into the game now for Canada. Here's a jumper by Walton that doesn't go. This one finally does from Niyuku. I think Brankovic is getting tired. Not only is he playing a one-man zone, basically now he's only playing half court at a time. So nice. Hmm. Have those big men been on the bench at all tonight? Two coach and uh, no. Raj? I don't think no. so. No, not any one of the three. Brankovic either. Now that's something, you know, we got to look ahead now. This club, more than likely, will face uh, the U.S. club in the gold medal game. Now, when you start thinking about the history of the tournament, and again, although Croatia is different than what was Yugoslavia, they have three golds, three silvers, and two bronzes. The Soviets, which are now Russia, have three, three, and two, so the same medal count. The United States had two, three, and two. So an opportunity to catch up. But you'd have to envision these clubs meeting in the gold medal game, the United States and Croatia. And I'd have to say right now, if I the Croatian coach, I'd put these players on the bench a little bit because uh, they're going to need every ounce of stamina they can have as the U.S. is much deeper in the front line. This is a tough tournament. To eight games in just barely a week and a half. Exactly. But you have a very good point. you got to pace these people down the stretch. This man in particular, but he's looking as fresh as when the game started, Tony Kukoc, as he sinks the first. Less than three minutes to go now. He drains another. So as is the case tonight where... Croatia was too big for the matchups that Canada had be the other way around against the U.S. team and particularly when they can come back with three centers on a guy like Brankovic. Alice missed the three-pointer oh, went over the top of the backboard so they'll fire it back door for a pass from the end zone. And he's talking to his coach maybe he's coming yeah he is coming out he basically maybe we're getting word down there to him. Finally huh? That was a fine ball game 238 to go so it's not like he came out anytime too early. So the last workhorse uh, is Raja still on the court for Croatia. Two and a half minutes to go. Well, Kukoc is still out there. He's there too. Looks like he got to the bench. He back to resume the action. Baseline three-point attempt misses. McMahon, Alice with him. McMahon will lay it up and in. 84 to 59 now with barely two minutes to go. Good hustle play by McMahon, but got there a little too late. And Thomas Etch with that size advantage on him. Pretty tough to take it away. He took him down, takes the foul. Nice, nice bit of sportsmanship. There's Raja coming out. Over two minutes to go, Josip Brankovic. Right out run McMahon. Nice to drive it into the paint. Lost possession last moment. You notice how disorganized this club becomes when Kukoc does not have the ball? You know, it, it, it's like scatter barrel. You, all of a sudden, you put the ball in his hands and everything settles down. He sees the play. So it's going to be something extremely important to them as they advance on to the gold medal game. Uh, for these players to understand him, and of course you're going to play against uh, Croatia defensively. Who are you going to put on him to make him wear down a little bit? Not the same team when somebody else has the ball. Romad Zets has hit the first, and he pops in the second. A minute 50 remaining. 86-59 the score, Croatia. Walton for Canada. That didn't convert. A back screen set play for that lob. And off the rim, the long outside perimeter shot fails. 
Good coach not only is the leader of this team, he's the quarterback physically and verbally. The direct players where to be, where to go for the pass, what to do. Nioku. Works ball, dives for it. And it uh, is unsuccessful to go over to well, Croatia. Just as the case with Martin Keene, who came in and gave great effort. Great effort here as well. No opportunity to get the ball back. Looks like two coach has got to go the distance. Drops in two more. Jackson's given up about four inches there. And there's Kukoc anticipating the pass. He's everywhere. And we said he was the most valuable player in the 1990 World Championship. And he puts himself in a position to do as well here. Long three-point attempt missed from J.D. Jackson, a great nephew of the legendary Busher Jackson, a hockey fan. We got a whistle now with 42 and a half seconds to go in a 90-59 Croatian lead. And finally, Tony will sit down after a good and long night's work. 15 points he has scored. 15 points and probably accounted for another 40. Absolutely. One way or another. He's bigger than them. 92-59 now. 30 seconds to go for McMahon and Team Canada. The medal hopes looking very slim right now. Simply out manned and outsized by the skilled, experienced Croatian team tonight. McMahon tries to drive it in. Hooks is denied on the rebound to William Miyuku. One last chance for Croatia. Walt got a hand on that. We have three and a half seconds to go. You know, when you think of the World Championships, there are only seven countries that have ever won a medal of any kind. How about that hook shot? That <laughs> might go. have gone. Close. And Ken Shields' team takes its second straight loss in the second playoff round of these World Championships. 15 points down at halftime. Croatia more than a double that margin in the second half, winning it 92 to 61. After defeating China in their first game, 105-73, they easily handled Team Canada, and uh, it looks like, as the form chart said right from the beginning, we're heading for a dream team Croatian final on Sunday. Well, there were the two Celtics hugging each other. And obviously, Raja got the better of it tonight. Let's check in with Sunil Joshi. While you're waiting, be sure to visit the Anomalies. Okay, Chevy, let me just tell you, I've got Dino Raja here. Dino, first of all, tremendous support from the Croatian community in this building for you. Yeah, there were six men for us today and uh, the other days. So hopefully, they're, they're going to be here our next couple of games. You had something special to say to Rick Fox before the game and after the game as well. Can you tell us what it was? See, first of all, we, we're friends. So there's nothing, uh, nothing can come between us. And it, no, there's no game can come in between us. We're so good friends. But I told him before the game, we're going to beat you between 50 and 20. And he didn't believe me. I guess he believes you now. Now, tell me about this team. You have dominated from day one, and everybody's been talking about the dream team. So you guys have been sort of just taking, business, taking care of business as you go. See, we are a very motivated team. We have a star who's leading us. We have to dedicate this, this, this whole tournament to, to our captain, who unfortunately is dead. And that's our star who's leading us to our whole victory. So hopefully we're going to reach the finals. That's our goal. And for those who don't know, we're talking about, of course, the Dazen Petrovic. Tell me about the way this tournament has uh, unfolded as far as you're concerned. Are you getting better with each game, or is this as good as we can see from you? I think we just got better uh, each game we play. Uh, I, I just can't believe how good how good we are playing right now, and uh, I just hope so that that that, that we're not going to give up one set, one single second in the future, and that we're going to go all the way to the finals. I was talking to some of the Croatian fans, and they were chanting, "No way, USA! No way, USA!" Obviously, that's what you're after. No, we want to be uh, realistic people. If you want to hear lies, I can tell you a couple of them. But if you want to be a real man, then you have to say that the final goal uh, is the finalists. If we reach that, we're going to be more than satisfied. Okay, Dino, thank you very much, and congratulations. Let's go back to Don Chevrier. Well, 
very candid about that. Not that uh, they won't give their all if they make the final against Team USA, but uh, such a such a hurdle, this team. Let's go to Jerry Dobson. Okay, Chevy, and for being named this evening's Harvey's Player of the Game, Dino Raja will receive Zodiac.